give in to your pride. Show me your greatness. Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm going to be giving you a little tutorial and guide on how to play Monarchs. Uh, so for my little introduction, uh, you can skip ahead. I've got everything titled at the bottom uh, for whatever section you want to look at. Uh, so this is just an introduction. Uh, very basic off the bat, uh, beginning with why you should play Monarchs all together. Um, well, first and foremost, uh, the deck is extremely, extremely cheap to build. Uh, it doesn't run an extra deck, you can't actually play any cards in your extra deck, so that automatically means that it's going to be quite a cheap uh, deck to play. Um, and pretty much every single card, every single important card you're going to need in the main deck is actually going to be available to you in just a structure deck. There's going to be one or two that aren't in the structure deck, which I'll mention later, uh, but for the most part, you're going to have everything you actually need in just three structure decks. On top of that, uh, the deck itself is very, very competitive. Uh, it's almost a bit of a hard counter to MM or Pepe, at least it tries to be. Uh, it's extremely reliant on a card called Dominion of the Monarchs to completely shut down MM. Uh, you can play Vanity's Fiend as well, which uh, MM can struggle with. Uh, so it, it's not exactly going to totally uh, dominate the meta but it's definitely going to be able to uh, compete with Pepe. Uh, you probably, like, I would say that it's a little still in the favor of MM, no doubt, but uh, it, it's definitely one of the best decks that's going to be available after its release that can compete with MM at least. Uh, on top of that, this deck has an extremely, extremely good rogue matchup. Uh, most rogue decks uh, can just be completely shut down by things like Stormforth, uh, probably one of the best anti-rogue cards in the game that can take advantage of whatever silly things people can throw at you being able to tribute your opponent's field uh, and the deck uh, can play through back row to an extent uh, it's very good at uh, replenishing its resources it has a lot of things that uh, activate in the graveyard uh, which means that if they do get stopped on the field in some shape or form you're going to be able to uh, what's the word um, recuperate uh, on top of that, uh, a lot of the cards themselves are extremely good, uh, primarily uh, the Stormforth, uh, but the Aether is very good for disrupting your opponent's plays, uh, coupled with Kuraz, uh, and the deck can generate advantage quite well with uh, things like the Prime Monarch. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, these are all things I'm going to mention in the later part of the video, so don't worry, uh, feel free to skip ahead whenever. Uh, and of course, final reason is, well, they're Monarchs. I mean, everyone everyone loves Monarchs. Uh, if, for the, anyone who's been playing for a long time, uh, Monarchs have always been a bit of a fan favorite deck, so it's good to see that they're back and competitive in some shape or form. So uh, I guess without further ado, uh, I'd uh, pretty much like to get straight into the video. Talk a little bit about Idea and IDOS now. Um, these are two little guys. Uh, you're never going to use them for their high levels or attacks or damage or whatever like that. You're going to be using them uh, primarily for your tribute folder and for their ability to uh, get you back your advantage uh, and generate advantage uh, and make sure that you've got enough resources to last for grindy games uh, and, and things like that. The way this works is idea uh, is normal summoned. You can special summon uh, IDOS from your deck. Uh, you can also get ideas effect uh, if it's special summoned. So if you use one for one, for example, you can special summon idea from your deck and that can still resolve its effect of getting idos uh that's pretty much idea's main effect it's going to be it's going to be there to get you idos because idos is extremely important uh because what idos does is it lets you get an extra normal summon that turn it's uh you can kind of understand that there's a bit of a loop going on so when idea gets idos idos gets you an extra normal summon and then that means you contribute someone out of your hand so you can see how that works. But it gets better than that because what IDOS does is uh, it's going to be able to uh, bring idea back as well so you can do the whole play again. Uh, when these two are in the graveyard, uh, what you can do, uh, a standard combo, uh, you can banish IDOS from your graveyard and then that special summons idea from your uh, graveyard and then idea 
can special summon another Eidos from your deck and then that Eidos lets you tribute summon again. So you can see that you're going to be able to, with these two, uh, you're going to be able to tribute summon pretty much every turn. You're going to have the fodder to tribute summon every turn. You're going to have the fodder uh, to keep going and to generate your resources uh, in this way because they're going to be in the graveyard so they replace themselves very easily. Uh, but it's also important to mention that idea uh, when it leaves the field uh, in any shape or form. So if they stop it in some way, attack over it, or if you tribute over it, nine times out of ten, this is where you're going to use the effect, you add back one of your banished um, Monarch spell or trap cards to your hand. So this is what's going to help you in the grind game idea, is going to be able to add back things uh, that you've banished for Pantheism, which I'll get into later. But it's just important to remember that uh, a lot of the Monarchs uh, are going to be milling, so and then you're going to be banishing them. So it's important to uh, plan ahead sometimes two, three turns ahead to make sure that you know what you need to be sending to your graveyard and what you need to be banishing. So that idea can add those back to your hand and you can, you know, really push forward and do some crazy plays because you've managed to like plan ahead three, four steps, etc., etc., just to make sure that you can resolve ideas effect uh, efficiently. So yeah, to recap, uh, these two are uh, they work in synergy with each other really well. Idea gets Eidos, and then Eidos can get Idea back. Eidos can be normal summoned or special summoned, and it grants you an extra tribute summon. Uh, and then Idea adds cards back from your banish zone, and that lets you uh, grind out the game. So, two important cards, you always want to see what, uh, one of them at least in your opening hand. Eidos obviously a little less worse, uh, a little more worse to open than I than ID alone uh, but Eidos is still good on his own because it does let you have an extra normal summon. So now we're going to get into some of the more uh, complex kind of side of uh, the deck. Um, the I guess you could call the big main boss monster you're going to be focusing and relying on a lot of the time is going to be Aether. Uh, so let's go through each effect once per uh, one at a time. Uh, the first effect of Aether, uh, nothing special like pretty much every other monarch, uh, I believe. Um, you can tribute summon it by uh, tributing one tribute summoned monster. So you don't need to tribute two of your guys, you can tribute summon another Aether, for example. You only need one of them. Uh, that is just gonna uh, be good for you in the long run because it means you're gonna be using less resources, obviously, so that's quite obvious. Uh, the second effect is extremely important. Um, when this card is tribute summoned, um, you mill two monarch spell traps from your deck uh, nine times out of ten, you're going to be sending like uh, a pantheism uh, or a prime, uh, and or potentially something else as well. Uh, but I'll get into why these two specifically are important, uh, and when I do explain those. Uh, but essentially, what that's going to let you do is when you do mill these two uh, spell traps from your deck, uh, it means you can special summon a monarch from your deck. Now that's relevant because. Uh, you're going to be special summoning out, for example, Kuraz, uh, which I'll get to into uh, after this, uh, but Kuraz is going to be your main disruption. So that's why Aether is really good. He's going to be there to, uh, he's going to, be there to uh, interrupt your opponent's plays during their own turn when they're trying to, like, uh, you know, form a board or something. Uh, you're going to be able to summon out this guy uh, on their turn and then... Uh, special the Kuraz to pop some of their cards and stuff so uh, there'll be a lot of uh, different kind of things I can suggest for you to do when I mention Kuraz uh, but it's really important to know uh, that Aether can essentially recruit anything you want from your deck to your hand so you can special out like Arebus, you can special out Mega Caius, uh, get that onto the field and then in the end phase it's going to bounce to your hand and then that means when it when it's your turn after you've done this on your opponent's turn you're going to be able to pretty much like have access to any monarch on your deck because of Aether. It's also important to underst uh, understand that it can be tribute summoned on your opponent's turn and that's going to be primarily where you're going to be using Aether at its most deadliest is tribute summoning it on your opponent's turn. Uh, you're either going to have a card out on the field like an idea or Eidos to be there for your tribute fodder or uh, which is actually probably the best way to do this is when you're going to have something like Stormforth out in the field. So you're going to be able to tribute summon this guy 
on your opponent's turn by using their monster and then you're going to be able to bring out something like Kuraz to disrupt their plays. So that's why Aether is an extremely, extremely fundamental part of this deck and you're going to have to really uh, study this card in depth and really uh, you know, reflect on it a lot because it's going to be so important to a lot of your plays uh, and it's pretty much going to make or break uh, how well you're going to do with this deck is by utilizing Aether to its maximum potential. So just to recap that really quick, uh, you contribute summon it by tributing two guys, you send two or spell or traps from your deck to your hand, uh, sorry, from your deck to your graveyard, that lets you special a monarch from your deck, that monarch will bounce to your hand in the end phase, and this guy can also be tribute summoned in your opponent's turn, and when you couple this with things like Escalation and Stormforth, uh, it's going to be extremely, extremely disruptive. So like I said, Aether, very, very important card to getting to grips with and to learning. So for the next major monarch you're going to be playing in this deck uh, is going to be Erebus. Uh, Erebus, uh, like Aether, you're probably going to play three of it. Um, and this guy has a lot of similar effects to all the other monarchs. You tribute summon it by tribute uh, by tributing one tribute summoned monster, so you don't need to tribute two guys. Um, but this guy uh, is extremely important because it's going to be able to out uh, a lot of problem cards your opponent has, a lot of strange locks, uh, floodgates, um, anything like you know annoying and stuff is going to be able to uh, shuffle away um, to what it does is on tribute summon like Aether uh, you mill two monarch spell traps from your deck and that lets you hand loop your opponent you can shuffle something from their hand uh, turn one that's probably what you're going to be doing most of the time if you have an Erebus in your hand you summon it and you just uh, put one card from their hand into their deck it means they're going to be starting with one less card uh, but also can shuffle from your, uh, your opponent's field to the graveyard. Uh, sorry, from the opponent's field to the hand. Uh, and like we mentioned earlier, if you're going to be, if you are able to tribute some of this on your opponent's turn with something like Escalation, um, it means that you're going to be able to disrupt their plays uh, really easily. And like we mentioned, uh, monarchs are heavily, heavily reliant on disrupting your opponent. Uh, now Aether is obviously going to be the prime one to be doing that. Um, but Erebus will be able to do that on your opponent's turn, uh, but you will be using it mostly on your turn to uh, shuffle away things from the field uh, or the uh, or the hand. Now, uh, the other important effect to take in consideration is when this guy's in the graveyard, so even after you've used him, uh, your opponent's beat over him or whatever, uh, you can discard a Monarch spell or trap in your hand, uh, and that does sound like a bit of a heavy cost but as we get into the spells you'll understand that that's actually not too big of a deal uh, so you pitch something out of your hand like prime for example and then you can add himself back to your hand or any other monarch you have in your graveyard you can add back an aether uh, uh, i believe you can even add back things like uh, vanity's fiend or majesty's fiend if they're in your graveyard uh, you'll just be able to add those back right right into your hand again uh, and you're going to be able to uh, use them for whatever thereafter so Erebus, uh, you're probably going to play three of it, like I said, and yeah, it's it's extremely important because it's going to be your other boss monster that's going to be able to put a lot of pressure on your opponent uh, in different ways that Aether uh, doesn't. Talk a little bit now about Kuraz. Uh, it's very, very simple. Uh, probably doesn't even need its own slide, but I wanted to mention because it is an extremely important card in the deck. Because like I mentioned with Aether, uh, Kuraz is going to be there to disrupt your opponent's plays. So what Kuraz does is when it's normal summoned or special summoned, which is what you'll be doing most of the time with Aether, uh, it's going to pop two cards your opponent controls uh, or yourself. Uh, it pops any two cards on the field and then you or your opponent draws one for each of those cards pop. So you can pop your own things to draw one uh, and you can also pop your opponent's cards uh, but on the downside they're going to be able to draw for those cards so you need to make sure that your uh, popping effectively and efficiently uh, and yeah like I said nine times out of ten you're gonna be getting Kuraz out of your deck with Aether that's essentially the main combo uh, so against things like MM or Pepe uh, if they're about to um, clear your Dominion or a Floodgate or something uh, that you don't want them to clear or if they've got scales they're establishing uh, you can summon Kuraz uh, from your deck by tributing Aether on your opponent's turn, and then that's going to let you disrupt. The final part of the spells, I'll just go over all the generic uh, Monarch spell or traps. Uh, 
don't want to like make a slide for each of them because they're all very simple uh, so I'll just go over them quickly here uh, tenacity of the monarch um, very simple to use reveal one of your monarchs in your hand and then you can add any of other monarch spell or trap from your deck to your hand uh, so reveal for example aether uh, add stormforth and then you contribute summon uh, one of your uh, one of your little guys and then one of your opponent's monsters very easy uh, March of the Monarchs, you're probably going to want to play one of them uh, because you, you want to give Pepe uh, as much of a difficult time as possible uh, to clearing your Dominion and one of the ways to establish your Dominion is to make sure that they can't get rid of your monsters because if you don't control a Tribute Summon monster uh, then Dominion is essentially just a blank card on the field so being able to protect your uh, Monarchs from things like Eccentric Archfiend or uh, a Castell, uh, well actually they can't go into Castell in the first place, um, but you know what I mean. It's good for protecting the Fiends, uh, you're probably going to want to main deck Vanity's Fiend. Uh, and yeah, being able to have a marched uh, Vanity's Fiend uh, is, even without Dominion, that's going to be very tough for your opponent to deal with. So March is very important, but of course uh, you only need to play one. Stormforth, very simple, tribute opponent's monster. It's a quick play, so you can use it on your opponent's turn. Escalation, you can tribute someone on your opponent's turn, so if you have two little guys out, uh, you know, you can just tribute tribute them and tribute someone Aether, uh, get Kuraz, pop your opponent's cards, etc. Important to note that Escalation, uh, you can couple that with Stormforth uh, for some very, very, very disruptive plays. Another card, uh, the final one, uh, Return of the Monarchs, whenever you tribute someone a guy, uh, you add a Monarch from your deck to your hand. Uh, Return of the Monarchs is an extremely confusing card because it's going to be able to miss timing uh, along with Kuraz. Kuraz is a when effect, Return is a when effect. Uh, so you need to make sure you're ordering the chain links correctly and properly to be able to make sure that you do uh, get the effect of Return or Kuraz etc etc. Uh, just make sure that uh, when you're using Return that you always make it chain link 1. Uh, when you're using Kuraz as well, Kuraz always has to be chain link 1. Uh, it's just making sure that you don't have any timing issues. Again, one of the reasons why this deck isn't as easy to play as a lot of people make out. You're one of your most important cards, Kuraz, uh, is going to be able to miss timing occasionally. Uh, so just keep that in mind as well when you're using Return. And that's pretty much all the spells now. Uh, these are all the ones that you're going to have to deal with. Uh, always play one of each. Tenacity, always play three. Stormforth, always play three. Uh, the other ones, probably, uh, probably worth running. Uh, but it's up to you if you feel like they're worth uh, playing at all. Queen of the Monarch is probably a card that many of you have probably heard of before this video. Uh, it's going to be the deadliest spell or trap in your whole deck. Uh, what Dominion does uh, is very simple. Uh, if you control a tribute summon monster, your opponent isn't going to be able to access their extra deck. And that includes pendulum monsters. Your opponent can pendulum summon from their extra deck if you have Dominion out with a tribute summon monster. This is essentially going to be your win condition against MM. Being able to keep up Dominion reliably, being able to keep up a Tribute Summoned uh, monster on your opponent's turn reliably, that's how you're going to be able to be MM and Pepe. The other effect for Dominion uh, is pretty simple. Your uh, Monarchs get 800 attack uh, during the damage step. Uh, and the other important uh, effect, uh, effect that you'll be using quite often uh, is going to be uh, the ability to reduce the level of one of your monsters in your hand by two. So, as you're all aware, uh, a lot of the, the the big monarchs like Aether, like Erebus, uh, and any other mega monarchs you want to play like Caius, uh, they have levels of eight. So what uh, Dominion does reduces that by two, means you only need to tribute summon one tribute. Uh, so you can summon out like uh, your Eidos, uh, and then that lets you tribute someone just one guy uh, rather than having to tribute someone a big guy it means that you can tribute someone something small like Eidos by reducing the monster in your hand by two levels but it's important to know at this point that Dominion is going to be able to uh, lose out to things like Ghost Ogre because it does activate so if you activate the effect to reveal a monster in your hand uh, you are at risk of losing your Dominion so it's, so it's important to keep that in mind when you're playing against MM. Make sure that if uh, you sense that they might have a Ghost Ogre, uh, that you're able to uh, 
keep a tribute get summon guy on board uh, and if you already do have one on board there's no need to be greedy etc um, you can just stay with that guy on board for example uh, I think that's pretty much all else I wanted to mention about Dominion that's important uh, like we said keeping this on board is extremely important so you're gonna want to you're gonna want to play three you're gonna want to open one of them uh, it's very easy to search with things like tenacity uh, and yeah this if you want to take anything away from this video um, this is this is gonna be your win condition against Pepe so that does it for uh, all the monarchs um, you can tell that it has an extremely extremely low monster count uh, so like we mentioned Aether, Idea and Eidos, Arebus and Kuraz so that means you're gonna have space for other things you might want to play there's a couple of good mega monarchs you want to include uh, you could probably ju include one mega Caius, a uh, mega Zaborg or maybe a mega Thestalos uh, have a read at the different mega guys and you can decide for yourself if you want to play them like we mentioned with Aether's effect uh, you only need, need to play you know one of or two of the other mega monarchs uh, because it's going to be very easily to search uh, with Aether. So that pretty much does it for all the monsters. Let's move into the spells. Uh, the first thing we have here is uh, Pantheism. Uh, now a lot of you guys uh, have probably heard about this card. Uh, it's 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 extremely good. Uh, what you can do is you can pitch a monarch spell or trap. Uh, best case scenario, you pitch a prime from your hand, and it lets you draw two cards. Uh, so it is a cost to pitch, so your opponent can negate and you go neg two. Uh, but the plus side is this card actually has a graveyard effect as well. Uh, so you actually, you know, if your opponent wants to infinity your pantheism, that's probably going to be like completely okay. Because what this card does is it banishes itself from the graveyard and then you can reveal three monarch spell or traps from your deck and then your opponent adds one of them to your hand. So, yeah, as we mentioned earlier, uh, with Idea adding back your Banish cards, that's how this is going to work. Idea is going to add back your Pantheism, and then you can use the draw effect of Pantheism again if you so wish. Uh, and yeah, that's how you're going to keep your engine going, that's how you're going to be able to recycle, uh, thin your deck, get to all the cards you want, uh, because Pantheism banishes itself, adds uh, anything you want. So, for example, if you really want to tribute someone that turn, Using your opponent's guys, uh, you don't need to make you don't need to uh, reveal three cards of different names. What you can do is you can banish Pantheism and then just put three Stormforce on the on the field, and your opponent has to give you one of those Stormforce to your hand, and it means you can Stormforce their guy. Uh, so it's extremely extremely good to be able to have such powerful draw engine uh, and to be able to just search out any Monarch spell or trap you want from your deck to your hand. It's not that reliable because you do have to rely on your opponent to make sure that they pick the right one uh, but a lot of the time you can for example uh, reveal the tenacity uh, and then tenacity gets you anything you want um, so being able to just reveal three tenacity to be able to get any other one you want like with the one ofs like return like march like escalation uh, that's how this card is going to be able to like uh, thin your deck and get you exactly what you need uh, whenever you want so on to the prime monarch uh, another card in the deck that's extremely extremely important uh, and to be honest with you this card is going to separate bad monarch players from the absolutely amazing monarch players uh, the gap that this card can create in skill level is really really phenomenal um, so just to describe what it does really quickly first of all uh, what you can do on your opponent's turn and on your turn obviously because it's a spell or trap uh, shuffle uh, two monarch uh, spell traps from your graveyard into your deck and then you draw one card so that's going to recycle your resources the important thing that this card does is it banishes uh, a monarch spell or trap from your graveyard to summon itself so number one that's going to give you a lot of uh, tribute fodder because you're going to be able to summon it during your turn or your opponent's turn and on top of that uh, it's going to banish cards from your graveyard like stormforth etc cards that you've already used and then idea the monster we mentioned at the start of the video that's going to add those banished cards back to your hand so as you can imagine this is an extremely important card because you could potentially uh, create this cycle where the big monarch uh, mills uh, a monarch spell or trap from your deck to your graveyard and then 
Prime banishes it and then Idea gets it back. So you can kind of see the big cycle that goes on here. So being able to make sure that you send the right Monarch Spell or Trap card from your deck to your hand after Tribute Summoning so that Prime can get back, uh, so, sorry, so that Idea can get back uh, that card that you milled through Prime Banishing as well. Uh, that cyclic nature of this card is going to be so so important to making sure that you stay in the game long term in the mirror match uh, and it's going to make sure that you against Pepe always have the right card at the right time that you're going to be able to add back with idea so mastering prime is probably like one of the if not the most important thing that you're going to have to learn to do with this deck uh, being able to use this correctly like I said, it's just going to create this divide between bad Monarch players and amazing Monarch players so, so wide. So, yeah, make sure that you get this card sorted out and make sure that you learn Aether to the best of your ability because those two together, uh, they're going to make or break uh, how well you do with this deck. So this is my Monarch deck that I've been playing around with recently online. Uh, it uh, has all the essentials. Um, there is a lot of room, I feel, in this deck for you to play around with. Uh, so it's up to you. Uh, very basic, uh, 3 Aether, uh, I would never play less than 3. Uh, I'm playing a Mega Caius, uh, this guy's really good. Uh, like we said, we, you can search You can search uh, all your Mega uh, Monarchs whenever you need. So, I mean, do feel free to play other Mega Monarchs, uh, for example, uh, Mega Zaborg or whatever you want to uh, play, uh, or Thestalos, they're quite decent. Uh, but I would definitely play one Caius uh, as a staple Mega Monarch. I'm playing three hand traps because uh, you are going to go first a lot uh, with this deck, uh, and you need to make sure that you can stop your opponents uh, trying to uh, out out your big guys, uh, making sure that your Dominion sticks on the field. Playing three Idos and three Idea, those are very staple. You're always going to play those six together. Uh, 3 Erebus, the big bonds monster, uh, he deals with any problem, literally anything in the game that can be thrown at you, Erebus is going to be able to deal with by uh, shuffling away. Now remember it doesn't target so keep that in consideration. Uh, 2 Kuras, uh, I wouldn't play 3 because I feel like uh, he does what he needs to do in the deck better than he does in your hand. So you really want Aether to be able to get this guy rather than just having him alone from your hand. Uh, yeah, that you it may occasionally come up that you would need the third, uh, but you don't really want games to go on that long because if games are going on long when you're playing Monarchs, uh, chances are you're not winning and your opponent's stalling en enough to out your Dominion. And that's a problem because you don't want your opponent to out your Dominion. Uh, I am playing three Vanity's Fiend in the main deck. Uh, it's searchable through return, uh, but ideally, you know, opening this guy is really, really good. Um, generally, uh, Pepe struggle uh, against Vanity's Fiend, regardless. Uh, but if you back Vanity's Fiend up with a March, which isn't too hard to get access to, uh, it's absolutely devastating. Like they're only out with B to like uh, Twin Twister away Dominion and March, and then summon something that can uh, out Vanity's Fiend on its own uh, and finding an out to Vanity's Fiend on its own is tough enough as it is I feel so I'm maining 3, uh, I feel like that's important uh, you can you can play 3 Majesty's Fiend if you feel like you're in the cesspool of Majesty uh, of Cosmo decks Cosmo uh, died pretty hard to Majesty's Fiend this deck shits all over uh, Cosmo so you shouldn't even have to worry about that but you know, just saying 3 Pantheism staple, you always want to play this. 1 Rota, because we only have 1 Rota unfortunately. Uh, your little guys are warriors, so being able to Rota for uh, Idea is extremely important. Another card you could potentially play is 1 for 1, uh, to add a little bit more consistency. Uh, but I find that having 7 little guys in your deck is enough for an opening hand. Uh, but if you feel that you're struggling to uh, get access to Idea, uh, having 1 for 1 is a good idea. Good idea, who <laughs> punny. And then one return, those mega guys search each other when they get su tribute summoned. T tenacity, reveal a monarch, uh, add the monarch spell or trap. Sometimes uh, that's going to be Stormforth, uh, most of the time, sorry. Uh, of course, Dominion. 
uh, being the big one as well that you're going to be searching with tenacity most of the time. So three tenacity, three dominion, three stormforth. I've explained already how these work, uh, and yeah, you're always going to want to play three of each. Absolutely fantastic cards. I would honestly, I can never like play less than three. Dominion's a little annoying to open multiples off, but it's it's too good to have against Pepe that you just need to run three. Uh, one escalation, searchable, so there's really no need to play more than one. Um, it's it's not the greatest card I found in testing, uh, so it may get cut eventually uh, because you can already tribute someone on your opponent's turn uh, with Aether. Uh, but being able to tribute someone other guys on your opponent's turn, like Arebus, uh, that could potentially be just as uh, even better, and it might be worth this uh, this spot. And the three prime, of course, very important card. You're always going to want to play three prime. Uh, no extra deck because you can't play an extra deck with this uh, deck. It doesn't. It doesn't let you play an extra deck. Uh, and yeah, that's. Uh, I guess that's it, guys. So if you've watched this far, uh, thanks a lot for watching, uh, and I hope you enjoyed the guide. And yeah, I've said all I had to say already. So thanks, and I'll see you next time. Come face me. Give in to your pride.